If you were to ask a freshman what's the best way to lift something, they would likely give you one of two options, either a forklift or a scissor lift. And while forklifts do have their moments, today we're going to be going over scissor lifts, the construction and how to power them. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and let's get started. There are three main parts of the scissor lift. The actual scissor linkage, the powering mechanism, and the topper. Let's start with the linkage because that's pretty standard. The scissor lift is basically a modified version of the 4 bar lift type, except that instead of using the parallel properties of the bars to keep the end level as it pivots upward, we use the parallel function to extend the linkage as we push the ends closer and closer together. The first thing we need to do when constructing a scissor lift is rustle up a collection of similarly sized C-channels. They don't have to be exactly the same length, but it'll be a cleaner build if they are. The next step is to mount some bearing flats to half of them. Put them at the ends and exactly in the middle. Spacing is extremely important for the function of the lift, so make sure it's perfect. In this design, there are exactly 8 holes between the end flats and the middle. I use the hex button screws to attach the bearing flats because they have the lowest head profile of screws in my collection. We don't want to use the bearing flats on both sides because then we need to use extra spacers to account for twice the amount of screw heads, so in this design we're simply using a single bearing flat. Now we need to make an X shape using screws, small nylon spacers, and nylon lock nuts. Tighten it fully and then back off about a half turn or so. This makes it tight with little slop and also keeps it loose enough that it won't have too much excess friction. After doing this, we need to add another bar on one side, then add one to the other side before connecting them in the center. You can keep this linkage going for as long as you want, but I'm going to be stopping at three sections here, which should be long enough for most tasks. When mounting the scissor lift to a bot, you need some sort of free moving mechanism to allow the ends to move closer together. While not ideal, the VEX slides are a decent choice for this. I'm simply using a rail held up by standoffs with this bracket as a carrier for the linkage. The other side is simply a static pivot. It's very important to make sure that both sides are level as this can lead to the linkage moving to one side as it lifts, just like on the wall bot. Now the question is how to power it. The method we used on the wall bot was the linear slide on the bottom. This is probably the simplest method. Using a rack and pinion setup to power the pre-existing slide, the motor pushes both ends together and thus extends the lift. I have a whole video from a while back on the specific mechanism that this is based on, so check that out if you want to see this in more detail. The one problem with this method is that it is incredibly, incredibly difficult to do. Even with a torque motor, it just requires so much force to push the bars together at the start, and if you gear it down enough to actually work, it takes something like 15 seconds to reach the top. It's incredibly slow. This method worked on our wallet because it wasn't fighting gravity or carrying anything, but when you combine both of those things, it becomes much more difficult, and there isn't any noticeable way I found to use rubber bands to lessen the load. But that's where the other power types come in. Other ways of activating the linkage that don't involve pushing the ends together directly. The next easiest method is the vertical slide. This one requires another rail, which is mounted to the base. This rail has a powered slide mounted to it, which has a screw coming out of it running directly through the first X pivot. When the slide moves up, it pushes the linkage up. But because it isn't pushing the ends together directly, it doesn't need to overcome that hurdle. Because both the mount at the base and the connection to the X pivot are both free spinning, this allows the mechanism to work and not bind. The third mechanism is the gear. We're using the gear mounted to one side of the linkage to twist it apart. I ended up trying a few different variations of this because it is significantly harder than the other two methods. I ended up settling on an 84 tooth gear connected to one side of the linkage at the center using standoffs. There's a motor attached with two very long screws to the opposite bar using a simple 12 tooth pinion. There's a small 1x5 strip of aluminum that is screwed into the gear which has a bearing mounted to it to help prevent the gears from skipping. It's not perfect and there are a number of ways to make this more bulletproof, but I'll leave that to you. As is the case with everything, it's simply a game of rock paper scissors. Having the slide on the bottom is easiest and lightest, as it simply uses the slide that is necessary for the lift for power, but it can be slow and require more torque to get started. Having the slide on the side means that you're limited by the speeds of a linear slide, but you aren't pushing the ends together, so you'll likely be able to use a faster gear ratio. The gear is probably the best method, but is the least compact and definitely the most complicated to make. The other important thing about the scissor lift is the topper. You need to have some sort of free sliding mechanism to allow the arms to contract but it also has to allow things to be mounted to it. My technique for this is a linear rail mounted to one side and a slide mounted to the other. The slide is stuck within the rail and allows the arms to contract while still providing a good platform for mounting intakes and manipulators. 
And that's the scissor lift. It's a decently complex lift, mostly due to the myriad of ways to power it and the precision you need to build the linkage. It can be pretty difficult to get working properly, but when it does, it can be both beautiful and powerful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Also, be sure to check out Blastwipe, my one pound combat robot. I've been working on a new version of it, and I think you'll like it. If you want to see what I'm currently working on, be sure to follow me on Instagram via the link in the description. Thanks again for watching, and keep designing.